Good morning, church. Today for Pathfinder World Day, our theme is I Will Go. And the Bible text I chose today is taken from Isaiah 6, verse 8. Then I heard the Lord's voice. He said, Whom can I send? Who will go for us? So I said, Here I am. Send me. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Now as we get into your word, please use me as a vessel. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Ken was born in Korea from 1910 to until the end of World War II in 1945. The Japanese were in control of, of Korea. During those 35 years, about 6 million Koreans were killed for refusing to worship the Emperor of Japan. As a result, many grew to hate the Japanese even after the war, including Ken. In July 1971, Ken flew to America. There he had a lot of Christian influences around him. He started to attend church and soon was baptized. During the course of time, he got a strong interest in missionary work, and that's when he knew his calling. He led mission trips to Mexico, Thailand, and many more places. In 1996, Ken was preparing to lead a mission trip to Nepal or South America. Then his pastor asked him to go to Japan instead. No, I can't go to take the gospel to Japan, he blurted out. I think you know the reason why. My heart is filled with hatred for the Japanese people. He literally tried to find all the excuses he could. Finally, he came around and went to Japan. He helped the community and did many more stuff, but still he hated the Japanese. Then one day, a young woman approached Ken. She was like, Pastor Ken, I'm so sorry. Sorry? What did you even do? I don't even know you. I want to apologize for, my pe for what my people did to your people. As a history teacher, I know about the suffering we afflicted on the people of Korea. But Pastor Ken, please stay in Japan. I am a Christian, and I know the Japanese need to learn about Christ. We need you. Ken finally knew, finally knew what, why God brought him to Japan. Back in the United States, Ken became an ordained minister and returned to Japan to share the good news about Christ. Ken had initially made excuses and did not want to do what God was asking him to do. Does that ring in the, a bell? Who in the Bible could have made excuses before finally agreeing to follow God's orders? Today, we'll be talking about Moses. Moses the prince. Moses the Hebrew prince. Rings a bell? What about Moses the murderer? Moses the most wanted criminal in Egypt of, in a certain period of time? Yes, I'm talking about that same Moses who was changed by God to lead the Israelites out of bondage. Well, we all know the story of Moses and where it's taken from. Taken from the book of Exodus. This is one of the greatest Bible stories that was ever been told, besides the story of Jesus, of course. It's about how the Israelites were delivered from slavery in Egypt with God's guidance under their great leader, Moses. But I can bet you 100% that Moses didn't think that about himself. Now let's take it from this point of view. If you were to go back in time to Egypt and tell an Israelite that Moses the prince who recently turned a wanted fugitive in Egypt was going to free them from slavery, they would have said, uh-uh, no. That Hebrew prince, uh -uh, I still be can't, can't believe he became a prince. Are you out of your mind? That boy is messed up. The kid is Hebrew, too shy, can't speak in front of people, stage fright at its worst. Do I even need to go on? And when he gets mad, oh boy, you can see those fists flying. Did you know he killed an Egyptian slave master? Now that you look from it, from that perspective, just think. God used that same good-for-nothing fugitive to lead his people out of bondage? What? Because God's plans are amazing. He sees the big picture, even if we're taking the little steps. And that's our first point. God has an amazing plan for your life. 
In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it reads, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Maybe you're that one person that doesn't really know what you want to do in life. Maybe you're starting your high school and are just confused as most of us are. Or you're just entering a new grade and everything looks like gibberish to you. But just know God has a plan for your life. Go to the creator of the universe who already has your life mapped out for you. God always has his grace in abundance, ready to dispense it if only you can trust him with your life. The key is, is that you need to accept God's plan for you. So, Moses is on the run for his life. Thought he had done something so right. Something completely right. He had killed an Egyptian slave master. He even tried to hide the evidence. What's the best thing he could think of? He hides the body under the stand. Not the smartest thing, but sure. But killing people is not the best way to do, do things either. Word starts spreading around, and soon Pharaoh finds out and wants to kill him. As I said, Moses is on the run for his life. Somehow, he escapes Egypt, crosses the desert, and finds himself in Midian. Now this is the part of the story where Moses finds himself at a well and sees shepherds harassing shepherdesses. Moses then scares them away and helps the young women. Now you already know the rest of the story, or maybe not. And if you don't, let me take a few seconds to school you. The women go back to their father Jethro and invites Moses to stay with him. And what do you know? Moses and Jethro's older daughter Zipporah get married. Talk about a typical biblical love story, but that's not the point. Fast forward 40 years. The Israelites are still slaves in Egypt. The Pharaoh who wanted to kill Moses has died. Meaning, Moses is somewhat off the hook. But a new Pharaoh has taken the throne. The people are crying out to God, and the Lord has finally heard their cries. So then God's like, all right, I can hear you. I still care about you. And I'm waiting for that specific someone so I can send to help you. So then God goes and appears in a burning bush and waits for Moses. Waits and waits and waits. Meanwhile, Moses is tending Jethro's sheep. He eventually goes up to Mount Horeb, but luckily God is patient. Then Moses sees a bush that's on fire, but it's not burning up. Literally lit on fire, but not burning up. Talk about an entrance. So in Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 10, it reads, Then God says, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, Here I am. Then God said, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals. You are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your ancestors. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. Moses covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. The Lord said, I have seen the troubles my people have suffered in Egypt, and I've heard their cries when the Egyptian slave masters hurt them, and I'm concerned about their pain. Verse 8, I have come down to the save the, them from the Egyptians. I'll bring them out of that land. I will lead them to a good land with lots of room. This is the land where much fruit grows. This is the land of these people, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. I've heard the cries of the people of Israel. I've seen the way the Egyptians have made life hard for them. So now, I'm sending you to the king of Egypt. Go, bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Now, I can imagine Moses speechless as he always is, thinking, you have got to be kidding me right now. Out of all the people, me? Are you sure, God, you did not confuse me with somebody else? But of course, Moses didn't say that, even though God knew what he was thinking. Verse 11, Moses said to God, I am not a great man. Why should I be the one to go to the king and lead the Israelites out of Egypt? Excuses, excuses. And that brings us to our second point. Don't make excuses. It's like Moses was saying, 
I'm a nobody, right? How often do we give that excuse or feel like we are nobodies when God calls us to do something for him? Isaac, verse 15, God said, I will be with you. This will be the proof that I am sending you. You will lead the people out of Egypt. Then all of you will worship me on this mountain. And then God's answer was, I will be with you. He says the same thing to us when he calls us to do something and we feel like we are nobody. He reminds us that he will be with us. God only asks us for a willing heart to carry his directives. He has given us each our own special talents that can be used to glorify God. Verse 16, Moses said to God, when I go to the Israelites, I will say to them that God of your ancestors sent me to you. What if the people say, what is his name? What should I tell them? Excuse number two. Moses was basically saying, I won't know what to say to the Israelites. And God told him what to say. Same for us. If God is asking us to do something and we feel like we don't know what to say, he will give us the words to say. Remember James verse 1 to 5, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. Make God your best friend. Spending time with Jesus will equip you for greater things. Be like young King Solomon. When he was given the responsibility to lead the great nation of Israel, he sought God for guidance. He knew his limits and realized that God could help him in his daunting task. But that's another story. And then God said to Moses, I am who I am. When you go to the people of Israel, tell them I am sent me to you. Then Moses answered, what if the people of Israel don't believe me? Or what if they say the Lord did not appear to you? Excuse number three. Here Moses was making scenarios in his head. Oh, the people won't believe me. When God tells you to do something, do it right away before the devil takes advantage of your procrastination. Remember the story of Abraham when he was told to pack up and go to a land he had never heard about. The poor man trusted God and left his comfort zone and set out for a faraway land. Talk about trust. Then God decided to show him a miracle. In Exodus chapter 4 verse 2, the Lord said, what is in your hand? And Moses said, it's my walking stick. And then God told Moses to throw his walking stick on the ground. So Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake. Then God told him to pick it up. And when he did, it turned back into a walking stick. Then God told him to put his hand in his coat. And when he did and pulled it out, he had leprous all over it. Then God said in Exodus chapter 4, verse 6, Now put your hand inside your coat again. So Moses put his hand inside his coat again. And when he took it out, his hand was healthy again. It was just like the rest of his skin. But Moses said to the Lord, But Lord, I'm not a skilled speaker. I have never been able to speak well. And now, even after talking to you, I am not a good speaker. I speak slowly and I can't find the best words. Excuse number four. Oh, I can't talk in front of people. I'm so shy. I won't know what to say. Then the Lord said to him, who made man's mouth and who made him deaf or not able to speak or who gives us man's sight or makes him blind? It is I, the Lord. Now go, and I will help you speak. I will tell you what to say. But Moses said, please, Lord, send someone else. Now let that sink in for a second. Now at this point, the Lord was getting angry. He even came to a point where Moses refused God's plan for him. And he said, no. Then the Lord became angry with Moses and he said, your brother Aaron from the family of Levi is a skilled speaker. He is already coming to meet you and he will be happy when he sees you. I will tell you what to say. Then you will tell Aaron, I will help you both of you to know what to say and do. 
and everyone will help you to the, speak to the people for you. You will tell him what God says, and he will speak for you. Take your walking stick, use it to do miracles. You see, the thing about Moses, he was so hesitant, so ignorant, just like the rest of us, even refusing to follow God's plan. Moses started to doubt and make excuses. The problem is, is that we focus mainly on ourselves. We begin to see a lot of defects and our inabilities. We forget who created us and who it is who sent us to work for him. If we start looking at our wretchedness and look away from the cross, we get, will get discouraged. Everyone has made excuses in their life, even the parents. Prudence, go dust. No, mom, the house is practically clean. Alana, go wash the dishes. Mom, I'm finishing my drawing. Sasha, can you go please and take out the trash? Mom, I'm playing video games. Brandon, go vacuum the house. Mom, I'm watching the Super Bowl. When God tells you to go left, most of us and some of us go right. And when God tells us to go right, we go left. And when you turn the opposite way, where are you headed to? The enemy, right? How are we as pathfinders supposed to go on God's errands? How are we as a church family supposed to go on God's errands? We constantly ignore the fact that God has called us to do something. We can't even get our directions right. Sometimes we forget that God is smarter and wiser than us. We have so much doubt that his plan is not going to work. But what this shows is that we don't trust God the way we should. Doubting is showing that you are lacking faith in the Lord and wanting to do stuff your own way, even though it's going to fail. God is calling you to witness to others, but also to witness to yourself because you are lacking something that he can supply. So finally, after the excuses Moses had come, Moses had come to his senses. Moses finally accepted his call. He finally, after all those excuses he gave, said, I will go. And you know what? Moses went on to become a hero to the Israelites, from performing miracles to being a great public speaker to becoming full of wisdom and leading the Israelites out of bondage. Yes, he made mistakes along the way. Yes, he still had a bad temper. He even broke the Ten Commandments all at once. But that's not a story. This shows us that God can use anyone, no matter what their past is. So what's in your hand, Pathfinders, that can be used by God? What is in your hand, church family, that God can use? You only have to be willing. Now, what is your excuse? Is it that you feel like you're a nobody or do you feel like you won't know what to say? What is that one thing that's holding you back from saying, I will go? God has an answer to every one of your excuses, just like he did for Moses. I will go and make a difference in someone's life by showing them Jesus. God's plan is the best plan you can ever follow. You might try to do your own thing, but to tell you the truth, it's never going to work. God is calling you to accept your call to change someone's life and also to change yours. Won't you say, I will go today?